Oh, it's been almost a week since I've seen this thing turn on. <laughs> and it turned on. I wonder how long it's gonna take for it to fall off. All right, so we are headed to finally go get that third one that I showed you guys in last video. Uh, I'm gonna be there around two o'clock-ish. I guess they close at four. So I was wrong on the their time open. The internet says they close at 2.30. Apparently that's just the general public. They're open for transporters in between uh, seven and four on Saturday and Sunday. It's the Carvana lot. So you guys let me know if you have any experiences with them. But I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna get that car, and then I'm gonna try to rearrange and see which cars are dropping first, which ones are dropping last. Because with the front sitting as high as it is with my truck, I don't like how much tongue weight is on the front of the truck. Also, I went and went through cash for that vehicle that you guys were voting on. We are going to pick it up, so you guys will see that. Not this video, not next video, probably the video after that. But we are going to pick that vehicle up and I am super excited about it. And then you guys get to pick the content that we do with it. So I think I'm going to start doing that. So, car one, car two. I'm going to try backing this one on and just going from there and maybe I'll get lucky and it should fit. I mean, it looks like, looks like it should fit just fine. So just uh, nothing crazy. Toyota Corolla, this thing should be super light. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think I'm gonna put the flip outs out for this one, but should be all right. So let's get to work. All right, well, she fit without the flip outs, which is great. So now I just gotta figure out how to get the ramps put away. And then we'll see which one gets dropped first, but it did raise the back of the truck up ever so slightly, not a crazy amount but we're gonna check the pressure in the bags. The engine is over the back, so this should pull it down a little bit, but we'll, uh, we'll check the pressure once we're done. All right, we're sitting just about level. Everything's tied down, strapped down. I'm gonna use a D-ring on this one. I could probably move them to the other side, but I'm not super worried about it because, by the way, I'm using a D-ring because what was happening was it was, this was sitting cockeyed, so we'll get her. Yep, ain't too bad. I'm the only non-Carvana truck here besides the guy next to me. Oh man, I like his truck though. All right. Let's get rolling. All right, so honestly, I made a boo-boo when I decided to uh, take this run. I gotta go to Niceville, Florida, which is like, oh, what a terrible spot. So that means the very like top left of Florida-ish. Yeah, so I screwed up and I did that one. So that's 18 hours away. So we might be able to drop one tomorrow. Let's put ourselves on drive since we're driving. Faster route available, save an hour. Wow, we just saved ourselves an hour. Like I said, we're gonna get out of here and hopefully drop, I forget even which car. I think it's the Corolla that's gonna get dropped first in Niceville. That'll be nice. <laughs> get it, Niceville, nice. And I'll be happy, so. Let's get her rolling. I'm trying to find a good load where I can use those flip outs. It's like, damn, I'm actually using the entire deck. I haven't overloaded it yet. That's actually pretty crazy to think about considering that 32 footer. I was always trying to fit things on that trailer that I couldn't. So like I said, I, I know I've said this in previous videos. I think I have the perfect trailer for my needs. I do. And then when I go CDL and I take one truck with two cars to make even more money, I'll be, that's when the flip outs will come in handy and it's like, I, I think it'll work out, I really do. So, and then we throw a top deck on there, maybe we, you know, throw a golf cart on top or, you know, something along those lines. We throw a golf cart or a, um, or like an ATV or something, then we make even more money. So this load is about $3,075 on the way down. Um, it's, it's decent, but it's not. The fact that I got it, you know, go to Niceville, that kind of threw off the mileage a lot. Usually I'm used to getting like just about 280 a mile on the way down. Well, the Niceville one kind of threw it off to the point where that's, it's probably gonna be like 240, 250, but it is what it is. I, I can't complain too much. We're actually making money now. We're actually refilling the account. Whereas 
before I was actually losing money. Every single week I was losing money with that 32 quarter. So I'm happy. I'm I'm good. something that's paying decent going somewhere realistically close to where I'm at so I'll drop one on the way up and it should work out fine so yeah we got a piece of equipment uh, I think for 1200 bucks it was like 3,800 pounds uh, that's coming up and then the other car so it's like that doesn't give me a lot of room to play with but I'm hoping I can find a car for 800 but we'll see if I can get another 800 bucks I'll be happy That'll make this week right around 5,100. So, I, I think it's doable. I do, I really do. All right, well, the edge decided to come back on. Uh, it shut off like five minutes into my drive earlier. Once I hit the turnpike, it's like, eh, it's like I'm gonna shut off, but that's good. Coolant temp's about 195, so we're not doing too bad, but I can smell the exhaust from scale restaurant closed. Okay, so scale closed. I could smell the exhaust, like the heat coming off of it um, earlier when I was climbing some grades. So I know I got her pretty hot, but I just haven't cared. I'm going to order the cord, so when I get back, I'll have a cord. So realistically, like the touchscreen, it's weird because the touchscreen works if it's just a simple, you know, turn the ignition off, turn the ignition on, like those commands. But it's like it won't actually like allow you to select what kind of truck so if you plug it into a dodge it's perfectly fine you'll be able to just drive and it'll reboot itself on its own but if you have like a ford or a chevy well then it's going to be fixed but yeah that's i don't know i really i don't know i can't wait to get rid of it get an instrument cluster maybe get an aftermarket uh exhaust gas temp gauge i think i'm going to order that one uh, on my way back up all right feel like getting out stopping checking the load Checking the straps on the tires. Wow, that's the first that actually stayed put. Oh man. So this will be pretty damn sweet that uh, this one's going first. It's very, very unfortunate that I'm still going to Niceville. This thing. Oh, look, they left the window down. 
Interesting. I didn't even notice that. Ugh. So put the key and put that up. The tire seems a little flat. But, yeah, let me go grab the key and put that window back up. Check the fuel in the tank. We're squatting a little bit. Check the kingpin. Everything looks all right. Found out they do make a kingpin uh, for like a, uh, a skid plate for the fifth wheel. It actually goes over the fifth wheel instead of putting it on the uh, the neck. So I'm gonna go and uh, purchase one of them. They're like 60 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that. So not too bad. All right, so I'm sure you guys are all saying, what's the load weigh? What's it pay? What's it, you know, and how much you spend it in fuel, you know, all this and that. All right, so I'm gonna go get fuel and then I'm gonna scale it. I'm gonna scale it after, of course, because I, I do think that I'm under 26,000. Um, if I'm not, if I'm not, it's a weekend anyway, so most of the scale houses are closed until I burn off some diesel. But I'm pretty sure that I'm under 26,000. And every time I come down here, there is a TA, usually in Ashland, Virginia. Uh, they are with EFS. It's usually in between 280 and 290 every time I fill up. So I always try to get fuel there. And then I always try to fill up somewhere down in Florida because it's pretty cheap there too. But I always try to get the diesel for 290 or under. I've been trying to keep that get that overhead down a little bit lower lately uh, with like where I fill up and everything. So I've been able to save some money there. Now this load, I'm gonna go over the numbers for you. The first one we're dropping is the Toyota, which is $1,025. Uh, I'm not sure which one we're dropping second, but the Honda Civic is 1,050. So right there's 2,075. And then we have the Subaru Cross Check, which is an even thousand, which is kind of sucks because the, the heaviest vehicle pays the least. So 2,075 plus 1,000. 3,075. Now you're probably thinking, how many miles? You know, I actually haven't checked the miles on this one. I'm going to estimate somewhere around 1,500. Um, it's definitely not more than 1500 from my house to go pick up to drop. So I'm gonna say right around 1500, we're getting about two bucks a mile. That's that's where I'm gonna leave that. I don't really feel like going through and calculating all the bullshit, but it is at least two dollars a mile. I'm used to getting about 280, sometimes three coming down with this trailer, but you know, nice fill. That's what threw it off. That adds another oof. Good God, a couple like 300 miles to my. My trip so that's why it's so low this time but beggars can't be choosers it is the weekend when i try to start booking loads try to start booking stuff on wednesday for thursday friday it didn't exactly work out all that well but we are loaded so i'm going to be thankful that i got loaded and then i'll be dropping all three on monday so that's basically it now we'll go figure out what it weighs and there's your fuel price for all that but it's always good going down i need i'm going to try to get two grand coming back up Let's get over here. Oh, first tank's full, just waiting on the other one. So, I had a bunch of guys tell me that I should take these chains off because DOT might see that and decide to pull me in for an inspection. And um, one of the things that I want to tell people is I actually want them to do that. I want to get as many inspections as possible in this truck this year to prove to people that you can have an old truck and still pass inspections. I've passed two level ones this this year. Um, the one guy gave me a level three and he said, you know, he, he got me for speeding and, and uh, no plate on the trailer, you know, whatever. But besides that, so I definitely wanna get this thing to pass as many level ones as possible this year. So um, even still, I'm gonna leave the chains on there anyway in case I ever decide to go back to a gooseneck, not that I ever will, but in case I ever decide, hey, you know, sell the trailer or this and that, like, they're there, okay? So I'm gonna get little hooks made up for them too to actually hang off of. And at some point, like I said, we're gonna get a top deck for when I get a CDL. Maybe make it possible to run ramps up that way, but we shall see. Uh, nothing's set in stone yet, but let me know down below what you guys are running for tires because I have three on the trailer that are kind of getting low and three are brand new. So let me know what you guys are running for 14 plies on the trailer because I believe someone mentioned to me that 16s you can only get 14 ply. That's the highest you can get. So that's what I want to get. Um, I still have a brand new one over here, but I think uh, the middle tire on the other side is getting, getting pretty low. Uh, it's definitely not, you know, ready to be replaced yet, but it's getting to the point where it'll probably be 
no, another 5,000 miles or something like that. So, unless it has already gone already, but this one over here is kind of getting a little smooth on the edge right here. Something's going on here. I'm not... Something's going on here. Something's definitely wrong. I don't know if the alignment's off on the trailer or what, but this edge is getting worn down real smooth. So... I'm gonna have to take that to get looked at. It's just the outer edge, so I have no idea. This tire's wearing all right. This tire over here is wearing pretty decent, so it's just that middle tire. So, like I said, let me know what you guys are running for 14 plies because that's what I'm gonna get. Um, and we'll go from there, but we are at 90 gallons so far. Let's see. You guys ask me what I spend every week in fuel down here. I don't really calculate it too much, but if you look at this, I'll do a fill up like, come on. I'll do a fill up like this, like twice, you know, down back. I get about a thousand miles to a tank. So if I run 2,500 to 3,000 miles, it's in between two and three tanks. So if you look at the cost for, I don't know, whatever that is, 321 minus my discounts are 270. So maybe $700 at most is what I spend on these trips. So just for you guys for some comparisons. All right, so I'm saving a picture of this, but you guys were worried. Wow, am I way under. 24,660 pounds, drive axles 8060, steer is 5020, and then trailer axles 11580. So I'm underweight across the board. All right, you guys can see, sorry, it's a little dark. 536,369 miles. That's uh, that's about it. So this rest area on I-85 has two trucks over there, and uh, that's basically it. There's no trucks on the other side. I don't know why, but just gonna check, make sure the load's secure and whatnot. We are not gonna be dropping tomorrow because I don't feel like going any further. But it seems like the middle tire on this trailer seems like takes the brunt of it of everything so i'm gonna check the tire pressures in the morning but this one is uh not looking too happy so i think it's getting a little low as well but for some reason it's the whole out like the out edge so i don't get that but the guy's running his apu over there those things are pretty damn quiet but i was gonna go to the loves but it's like honestly i'd rather just be able to walk in brush my teeth in the morning you know not a super big deal, but there she is. So, probably put some grease in the bearings. Um, I'm gonna do it when it's a little hotter. But yeah, that, uh, that center tire is definitely looking a little bit lower than the other two. I'm wondering if it's because those two are brand new. And then on the other side, the back one's brand new, and then we have the brand new one up there. So I don't know, maybe that plays a part of it. Um, but yeah, I'll check the pressures in the morning and go from there. Uh, and also at some point, I wouldn't mind, so you guys see these center beams right here, right? Uh, I wouldn't mind taking not this style light that's round, but like the one that's a little longer. And I wouldn't mind putting white lights in every one of them uh, or every couple one of them so that like I can have basically be able to see the vehicles at night and whatnot make it not a lot nicer so let me know what you think of that but the truck's pretty much almost done um i have someone i forget who you are if you're watching this video uh send me a message someone sent me some mega cab flares for 300 bucks i need to i need to pick up when i'm down here so if you see this video send me another message because i want those mega cab flares and then the grill, and then that's about it. And then this thing is all completely done. And then we can start working on body work and paint. So these self tappers have been on the grill since I was down in Florida. And I'm just now remembering to grab them. They've just been chilling up there on the visor. Look at that, two of them right there. Knowing what I know now, I'm gonna start moving these a little bit more strategically. And any heavy vehicles, so I'm gonna start putting the two light vehicles like this one's definitely the lightest one. This one's the second lightest, and then that one's the third, because that one's a coupe, so that one's pretty light. And then this is a newer one, so definitely a lot more weight to it. So that one would go first, this one would go second, and then this one I would put backwards right here. 
So that's how I'm gonna start doing it. But aside from that, hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in tomorrow's video. Safe travels. Have a good one.